How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slap Tam. Today we're looking at some historical cases where people claim they've received phone calls from the dead. But as always, before we dive into these fascinating stories, remember to hit that subscribe button for more awesome, creepy content just like this. A woman identified as Bonnie O tells a shocking story about phone calls from the dead mother that she says she misses every single day. She and her mother were close, so Bonnie was devastated by the loss. A few years after her mother passed, Bonnie was celebrating Christmas. She couldn't help but feel her mother's absence on this day. Late in the evening, the phone rang. When she answered, she heard a familiar voice. It was allegedly her mother. Bonnie was in shock. She told the caller, this can't be you mum, you're dead. The caller responded by saying in an agitated tone, oh come on now. The phone then cut off. Many have discredited Bonnie's story, saying there's no way she could be sure that it was her mother. Bonnie insists that it was, that her mother had a distinctive Norwegian accent and that she's 100% sure that it was her mother on the other end of the line. In 1969, a musician named Karl Uphoff was disturbed when he began receiving his own phone calls from the dead. In his case, the calls began two days after the death of his grandmother. According to Uphoff, his grandmother was deaf, yet she would call regularly and ask for him. His bandmates were often annoyed by these calls. His grandmother passed away and the band assumed that they would finally stop with these frustrating calls. Two days after her death, the phone rang. Upoff answered the phone and was shocked to hear his grandmother's voice. He asked how she could possibly be calling, which prompted her to end the call. He received several such phone calls over the next few days, but never got an answer to his questions. In 1995, a woman named Mrs. Wilson was excited to hear that a local radio show would be featuring renowned medium James Byrne. Mrs. Wilson's grandfather had passed away a year before and she wanted badly to communicate with him. Mrs. Wilson tried to call the radio station numerous times, but Byrne was very popular and the lines were jammed. Mrs. Wilson eventually gave up. After the show, Mrs. Wilson's phone rang. When she answered, she heard a distant voice telling her that he was all right and that he was with her grandmother. Mrs. Wilson was shocked to recognize her grandfather's voice. He told her to stop living in the past and move forward because he would always be watching over her. When the call ended, Mrs. Wilson feared it was a prank. She dialed 1471 to find out the number the call came from. The service read her own number back to her, suggesting that the call came from her own phone. In the 1990s, a woman identified as Betty had never thought about receiving phone calls from the dead. That is until she had her own shocking experience shortly after beginning a new job. She was alone in the office one day while everyone was out to lunch. Her co-worker Mary's phone rang and Betty decided to answer. The man on the other end said he was looking for someone and gave a name Betty didn't recognize. The man quickly corrected himself, asking for Mary. Betty said that Mary was out and asked for a message. The man said he was Mary's brother and that he missed her at a recent family gathering. When Mary returned, Betty gave her the message. Betty was stricken, stating that her brother was dead. She said that the first unfamiliar name was a nickname her brother called her and that she had in fact missed a recent family event. Betty could not have known these details. In 2001, a woman identified as Fern tragically lost her husband. Not long after, she began dating another man. Her friends and family believed the man was taking advantage of her grief, but Fern refused to believe them. Then Fern began having dreams in which her late husband appeared. She also noticed that orbs appeared in every recent photo of her. Fern was shaken and began to pray, begging her husband to come to her in a dream again and explain his bizarre appearances. She wanted to know if he was trying to warn her about the new man in her life. The next morning when she awoke, she was unable to recall any of her dreams from that night. However, when she checked her call records, she saw her deceased husband's name in her missed calls.
Frank Jones lived in his Lancashire home with his wife Sadie. According to the previous owners, the home was haunted by some sort of entity. The Jones family began having encounters with the entity, which they dubbed The Thing. Furniture was moved, taps were turned on, and sheets were ripped from beds, among other things. They eventually had the house exercised. Five years later, Sadie died of a heart attack. She was buried with her cell phone as she was known to be a bit of a cell phone addict. Soon after, Frank and other family members began receiving calls and texts from the phone. One day, Frank got a call from the home phone. This was odd as he was now the only person to live there. When he returned home, he detected the distinct odor of Sadie's cigarettes and perfume. He and his family suspect that these phone calls may have something to do with the entity that had plagued them years before. There are many people who devoted their lives to researching phone calls from the dead and other examples of ghostly voices. George Meek spent years researching ghostly voices with his colleague, Constantine Raudover. Raudover tragically passed away in 1974, but Meek continued the work alone. Meek never thought his research would hit close to home, at least not until 20 years after his partner's death when he began receiving unexplained phone calls from Raudover. In the calls, Raudover references the pair's work studying phantom calls, stating that Raudover's presence in the afterlife would be a new chapter of research. Meek was able to make recordings of the eerie conversations, but never determined how they had been made. The voice on the other end of the line, which is allegedly Raudover, is clear and speaks with an eerie tempo. This is Constantin Raudover. This is the first contact you get from us. I suppose that you can hear me. I can hear you very well, very plainly. Fine, so this is the beginning of a new story, a new chapter. Many paranormal investigators have studied this shocking piece of audio, yet no one's been able to explain it. Many experts believe it to be a breakthrough in paranormal research. Others, however, have accused Mink of hoaxing the entire event to pique public interest in his work. Some have even suggested that it might be a call from the dead, but that it may not be Raudover. Instead, it might be a malevolent spirit posing as Meek's friend with intent to cause harm. This is a fascinating piece of evidence. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section below. We will continue this. This is the first bridge we succeeded to build to the States. Mark was contacted and I must interrupt now. Apparently, even well-known authors are potential recipients for phone calls from the dead. One of the most famous examples of such a call comes from the author of numerous popular thrillers, Dean Koontz. According to Koontz, one day he was alone in his office. The phone there had an unlisted number, so when the phone rang, he assumed he would hear a familiar voice. The voice on the other end was familiar, but definitely unexpected. It was the voice of his mother, who had been deceased for years. The voice sounded far away and warned him four times to be careful. She said nothing else. Two days later, Koontz visited his father in a mental health facility. During the visit, his father shockingly pulled out a knife and tried to attack him. He was thankfully able to wrest the weapon away, but he went away shocked by the encounter. His father had never been violent before. After this surprising threat to his well-being, he couldn't help but wonder about the mysterious warning he had received just days before. Sometimes phone calls from the dead are a positive, if creepy, experience. One example is the case of Charles Peck. In 2008, Peck was killed in a tragic train accident. His fiancée and children were devastated by the loss. As they grieved, they began receiving shocking phone calls. A total of 25 people were killed in the train accident, but the searchers were unable to recover all of the bodies from the wreckage. They were prepared to give up their search when Peck's family began receiving calls from his cell phone. They could hear nothing but static, 
However, the calls were enough to spur the responders on in hopes of finding Peck alive. The family received a total of 35 calls over 12 hours. The last call came one hour before Peck's body was pulled from the wreckage. According to officials, Peck had certainly died long before the first call. Yet the calls enabled searchers to locate his body so his family could put him to rest. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at a story about a perplexing sales phone call, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll be notified about all our latest content. A woman identified as Mary B was working in sales for a phone company when she experienced her own shocking phone call. Her job was to call potential customers and give them a sales pitch to convince them to switch phone carriers. In this particular call, she spoke to what sounded like an older woman. The woman seemed interested and asked Mary a lot of questions about phone plans. She said she thought it would be a good choice as her husband made a lot of long distance calls and their phone bills were getting out of hand. However, she refused to make a decision without her husband's approval. She told Mary to call back the next morning when he would be home. The call was promising, so Mary followed up. This time, an older man answered. Mary told him about the conversation she had had with his wife the previous day. The man was clearly upset by this. He angrily told Mary that his wife was deceased and demanded that she leave him alone. He hung up the phone, and Mary was never able to solve the mystery. If you want to check out more of our content, there's a video there or a playlist there. If you want your name scrolling along the top there, consider supporting us on Patreon. There's a link to our campaign in the description box below. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. Peace.